Hello and welcome back to my scrap room. My name is Jennifer Perry and today we're going to be working on kitting up my newest painting from Diamond Art Club called Erase. Now I'm using the sticker that came with the kit as my drill storage container labels and you're going to see it's going to take me just a few minutes to get organized because I just was having a bit of a brain fart. It was late at night. In fact, doing this I borrowed my husband's filming lights so that I could just do this at night. I ran out of time during the day and I was just a little bit discombobulated. So you're going to see when I'm working on these stickers, it's going to take me just a minute to get my to get my ducks in a row, but it eventually happens. The other thing that you're going to be seeing is I'm using a variety of drill containers. I am using small ones. I'm using what would be considered large ones. And I'm also going to be using a couple of different sizes of medicine bottles. This painting only has 30 colors in it, but quite a few of them have a good amount. And I don't see, there's my drill containers. I don't like having spare bags of colors, especially right now I'm cat sitting again and dog sitting and it's pandemonium. So I don't wanna to have to worry about having a canvas open and having to refill one of my containers. So when I'm kitting up, if I can possibly get everything completely kitted and not have any spare little baggies that go with the kit. Sorry, I am dog sitting and grandma just came home so the chihuahua has announced to the world. But if I, if I can get away with not having, <laughs> she's not gonna hush until grandma gets in the door. We're just gonna talk over it. Anyway, if I can get around not having spare baggy storage, I, I'm going to. It just makes my life easier when I'm working on the kit. And I also try to use my, my drill boat to pour into, because you're gonna see on the very next color, I make a huge mess. I just totally miss the container all the way around. So I try to keep everything, this is the color that I'm, I'm really gonna mess up. But I try to keep it all contained, because again, cats, and with this I ended up with drills on the floor, I ended up with drills in my lap, and it wasn't the cat's fault, it was my fault completely my fault. What I'm doing is I'm measuring to see if it'll fit in this container. It's not going to fit in this container, so I'm going to get a little bit bigger container. And this is this is what's considered my biggest container as far as normal drill storage. But as you can see, I just, nope, it's a total mess. So I'm going to give myself a minute to clean up and get my little trusty paintbrush out and my paintbrush just helps me get everything back in the container properly. And now I'm gonna put the label on. Now that I know I have a container that fits properly. You're gonna see me do that a couple of times. These bags were a little bit difficult to gauge how many was in them. So a couple of times you're gonna see me pour into one container and go, mm, that doesn't fit and grab a different container before I put the label on. See right here, these are, they appear that they're gonna fit in the big containers but I'm not sure if they will, but there's enough. But there's some other bags that are gonna look like this that are overstuffed, and those are not gonna fit. So that's where I'm gonna have to just kinda play by ear, and see what fits, see what doesn't fit, and label appropriately. Now before I started this process, I did go through and put all of my bags in DMC numerical order, and they're in that silver basket type thing that is just at the top of the screen and I did that to just kind of make it easier on myself this time so I'm not wasting your time looking for bags and thinking that I've lost a color when I really haven't so what I've did, done is I went through and put everything in DMC number order and just kind of got it all organized and it made this a lot faster So in the last whip and chat that we were talking about, I was getting ready that the winter storm was just starting to hit. It was the first part of the storm. We had part one, well, actually we had three parts. We had part one, which was kind of minor, and 
it, you know, Saturday came along, all of us were ready to go out and grab her. You know, we were told, get your food, get prepared, you know, be prepared to just stay home for a while. Not a problem. I have a good talent for that. So I went to the grocery store, stocked up on a week's worth of my regular groceries. I just did it on a day, you know, day or two earlier than what I normally would have done. Hunkered down and got ready for the storm. Well, the storm rolled through. Monday was a lot worse than what we anticipated that it was going to be. My daughter lost power at her apartment. So they came over and they stayed with us until Friday morning. And I am, we, we lucked out. There were um, family and friends that had no power, that had no water, had no water or power. We did get below freezing. We even got um, below zero temperatures. We, there was two days that we were actually below zero, which I've lived in Texas for, I moved here when I was 13. No, I moved here when I was 12. I've lived here 34, 35 years, something like that. I've never seen it get below, I've never seen it get in the single digits, ever. And for it to go below zero kind of kind of scared me. And then you, you factor in our entire power grid went down and it was, it was life-threatening for, for the entire state. I've never gone through something like that before. Personally, with us, we were extremely lucky. We do have solar, but when there's snow on your solar panels, they don't work. And our house, our solar panels are on the roof, and it is a two-story house, and we do not have a ladder long enough to get up there. Normally, Tesla comes out and services our panels, so we don't ever have to get up there. So we just had to wait for the snow to melt. And then when the snow did melt, we were able to generate power and put power back on the grid. But we lucked out in a few other ways of we live very close to a fire station and they were not cutting power to fire stations and hospitals. We live very close to a fire station. And then the other thing is we have a water tower literally in my backyard. I mean, it's like one street over from my house in my neighborhood and they have to keep the water towers powered because of the pumps. You do not want the water freezing in the tower because it will burst and then, oh my God. And then you want to be able to pump the water to the houses. So we never lost water. We never lost electricity. Um, we did go on a water conservation and energy conservation. If you had power, they asked you to conserve it. If you had water, they asked you to conserve it. So we did. Um, I filled up several containers in the in the house and just so that we wouldn't have to, to run the water more than necessary. We did run it for our pipes, but that was at a bare minimum trickle. And we conserved energy like nobody's business. We didn't take baths for, for three days in a row. We didn't do laundry. We didn't, you know, we, we turned our heat down the works because there were people that didn't have, and we didn't want to, we wanted to try and conserve and get as much power back on the grid for them as we possibly could. But we were very thankful. We had food. We could cook. We had heat. We did have water. It took me a couple days to remember how to camp because we ultimately ended up camping in our house. And remembering, what do we do? There's a little bucket up there. You can see it. You know, what do you do when you're camping to conserve? What do you do? How do you conserve your water? How do you conserve your electricity? How do you, you know, what do you do? And it took me a couple days to get back into that mindset, but we did it. So today I'm working on, this is my second day of doing laundry and getting everything caught up. The state is slowly getting the water situation. It's not that we don't have water. It is just that the water treatment plants lost power in many parts of the state. And when they lose power, they're not able to treat the water. Therefore, when they come back up, it takes a couple days to get the water treated. Then you have to test it. See, here's me testing out a medicine bottle to see if it'll make a difference. But anyway, they have to test the water, make sure it's safe, and then once it's safe, they turn it back on. So that is slowly starting to happen across Texas. I'm deciding here that the medicine bottle was going to be a little bit too big. I'm going to keep it out just in case this does not fit in the regular size container. But I think on this one it does. can't quite remember. Yes, it does.
There we go. So yes, I'm, you know, we're, we're digging out and recovering and people are trying to get their, their frozen pipes fixed and and I've, I've read quite a few comments from people that live out of state that just do not understand why Texas freaks out so bad. And our problem with our grid is it was not winterized. It's not the fact that our, you know, Texas doesn't know how to deal with weather. We don't know how to deal with sub-zero weather because we never have it. Our homes are not built for it. But we also, our, our grid was not winterized and we were not aware of that. You know, as you know, we pay our bill in good faith that the equipment is being taken care of. We had no idea that the equipment was not being taken care of. So we'll have to see what happens going forward as far as that's concerned. I'm not going to get political on the, on the channel because I try not to ever get political on any of my social media. But that's what happened is our, our grid failed because it was not winterized. So we are getting back to normal. We have power, we have water, we have everything that we need to survive now. Homes are being repaired. Grocery stores are starting to fill back up. I don't think I'm gonna try and go until, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and wait till Monday before I go. I'm gonna give it a week. I have, I have plenty of food. We don't need to be going to the grocery store when there's people that have lost all the food in their house because their freezers quit working or their refrigerators didn't have power. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and wait and let people that need the food let them have it first because I am I'm stocked you guys have seen my pantry videos there's no reason for me to go out and, and buy more than necessary and I have a veggie box coming at the end of the week so well you know I'll have fresh veg coming in But yeah, oh, I figured out I definitely need more long sleeve shirts. I did not have enough long sleeve shirts. I did not have enough leggings. So I will definitely be on the hunt for those things. See, pill bottle, it works perfectly. So, I, you know, basically my mom is on a lot of medications. So when she empties out her pill bottle, she'll bring it to me. What about this one? And if it's a size that I think I can use, I stick it in my drill box or in my container box. See, just like that. Yeah, I think what I'm going to end up doing is eventually going to Walmart and getting some more leggings and, and long sleeve shirts. I don't ever wear leggings outside of my house, but we lived in pajamas for two weeks. It, it took two weeks to, between Storm A and Storm B and Storm C, it was a two week period. But, oh, and I did not do any filming because we were con trying to conserve power. That was the other thing I was going to talk to you about. I did drag my, my um, snack size you must believe painting downstairs we set up in the dining room I gave my daughter a little bitty one and let her try diamond painting for the first time and she was addicted so she might start diamond painting we'll have to see how that goes but she did tell me later on after after working on it quite a while she can she goes I don't think I'm built to diamond paint my back hurts and my neck hurts and I'm like oh yeah it does after a while I have to take breaks and she was not taking breaks. My favorite day to do any type of whipping chats or any type of long-term playtime with my canvases is laundry day because between loads, the washing machine tells you when you need to get up and take a break. And you figure about every 45 minutes to an hour, you get up, you go change your laundry and you know put your clothes in the dryer and what's in the dryer gets hung up and folded and your body gets a wiggle break and then when you're done with that cycle of laundry, you come back up and you play some more. And so I love to play on laundry day because it means that I am forced to get up and wiggle. So if you're looking for, you know, a way of, of getting your housework done and getting your, your diamond painting done, that's a good way that I get it done. So I kind of just take the morning, get my house tidied up and then laundry day. Of course, you know, having we're empty nesters, so I don't have small children in my house anymore, and I'm retired, so I don't have to, you know, report to duty. I can just get my house tidied up and diamond paint all day long if I want to, and just stop for dinner, and every now and then I keep waiting for somebody else to cook dinner, and then I'm like, oh wait, it's me. Okay, gotta go downstairs. Because I am chief cook and bottle washer around here. 
this is me deciding that, oh wait, I want to put the, the label on the lid and then going, mm, no, we're not going to take that label off. You're going to see towards the end of the video that this little tray gets quite full, but it can hold 30 colors. I've got a bigger tray um, I'm going to try and use for my larger paintings. I do have a, a bigger cutlery tray that I think will hold up to 60 colors. And then I also have my 60 color drill container organizer. You've seen them on AliExpress and, and Amazon. I've got one of those also. So if I have to, I've got options. The other thing I also did, which I completely forgot about until right now, is I ordered two new diamond paintings from Diamond Art Club in the middle of an ice storm. They're of course not here yet because all, all of the shipping is, is slower than normal. But I've got a cat coming up. Hi, what are you doing? Are you going to talk to? Don't, you don't need my straw. But anyway, I, I ordered, um, nope, did you get up there? What did I order? Oh, here, here's my phone. Hold on. I ordered, there's a Halloween canvas that my husband really wanted called Halloween Haunted, Ma Halloween Haunted House. And I can't pronounce the artist name, so I'll put it on the screen whenever I kick this one up. And then the second one that I ordered was a Josephine Wall. Y'all, I just figured out who Josephine Wall is, and when I saw this painting, I had to have it. Had to have it. So sorry, I had to stop for a moment for an emergency sneeze, but all taken care of now. Anyway, I was talking about Josephine Wall. I have never heard of Josephine Wall up until a couple of days ago, and I saw some videos of Josephine Wall paintings that have got over 200 colors in them from a diamond, diamond painting company in Germany. And really loved the paintings but wasn't sure if I wanted to order from Germany. So when I was on the Diamond Art Club website and I saw Masquerade of Love by Josephine Wall, I had to have it. Now this painting is 70 by 93, which is a really good size painting. For comparison, Erase, which is the one that I'm kidding up right now, is 53 by 76. And then the farm country is 70 by 98. So I've got some really large paintings coming up in the next couple of weeks or months, depending on how long it takes me to do them. I've, I've starting to lean towards the larger paintings. A, they're more expensive, but you get more bang for your buck as far as getting more playtime. They don't go quite as fast. They're a little bit more cumbersome to kit up and they're a little bit more cumbersome to work for or work with, but it takes you longer to do them, which for me means less paintings that I have to buy in the long run. Does that make sense? I feel like I blow through the 30 by 40s and the 50 by 50s and stuff. I feel like I go through them way too quickly and the bigger paintings just give me more playtime. So I'm, I'm leaning towards the bigger paintings. I almost ordered Minion Love. If it wasn't for the fact that it's Minions, which they're cute. I know they're cute, but it, I'm not a huge Minion fan. I didn't know if I wanted to do a painting, especially a painting that large that's Minions. So I did buy the Masquerade of Love and I did buy the Haunted House, which my husband was very pleased at because he wanted the Haunted House, but he wouldn't ask for it. Halloween is his very favorite ho uh, holiday. The entire year, Halloween is it for him. So I'll be working on that one during October, probably. And then I have another one from Christmas last year that I haven't worked on yet. That is from, I believe, Huacan. I'm pulling it up. I believe it's from Huacan. I call it Religion Nativity because there's no name on it. Oh, it's from Homefront. I'm sorry. And that one even is 50 by 70 inches. So that's even a larger painting. And I'm surprised because I've had that one over a year. I haven't worked on it yet. So my next one, two, my next five paintings are large format. So you may end up with a few whipping chats on each painting, which I hope you enjoy consecutive whipping chats because I think that's the way it's going to work out. 
and I'm just going to enjoy myself working on them. And they're all, all of them but that one religion, one, the nativity scene, they're all VAC. So I should be able to show you the entire canvas without worrying about copyright. We are just towards, getting towards the end of kidding this up. And I'm sorry if you can hear the computer, the fan's been turning on because it's getting a workout, but my microphone is really close to the computer. So you may be able to hear the fans. We're getting very close to the end. And at the end, I'm gonna show you the actual canvas. It's not gonna fit in the screen, but I'm gonna show you as much of it as I can. And it is just, I, it's prettier in person. I, and for some reason, I don't know what I was thinking. I knew, I saw the size of the canvas of Erase. And I was like, okay, that's going to be great to work on. When I opened it up, I was like, oh my God, this is much bigger than I expected it to be. And it's standard to what I've done in the past. Erase is 53 by 70, 76. In fact, it's even a little bit smaller than a few that I've done in the past. But I think it's because I've worked on a couple of smaller paintings. When I opened this one up, it was almost like an oh my gosh moment. This is huge. I'm having to incorporate the pool noodle method of keeping everything situated. I can let it dangle off the back of my table. I have room, but I have cats. So I try to keep as much of the canvas contained as possible. I try to keep as much of it covered as possible because you never know when they're going to take a flying leap across your work surface. And I'm just... Digging cat hair out of a painting is not my idea of fun. So I'm trying to keep as much of it contained and enclosed as I possibly can. Which is another reason why I set up my drills the way I do with these containers because the least amount of time that a container is open is the least amount of time that a cat can wreak havoc. So I try to keep my containers closed. I try to keep my a hand on my drill tray um, this drill tray actually has a magnet on the bottom, which helps because my tabletop is uh, sheet metal. So they can't come through and just kick it. It's magnetized. So anything I can do to alleviate flying cats across my work surface and sending things flying, I do. You're going to notice coming up, the last color has five or six bags. And I do not know how many um, drills that actually is. I'm not going to count. But my mother had one huge pill bottle that I was like, hey, this is going to be perfect for this color. And it was actually too big. So I was able to pour it down into a smaller container that is still, I'm able to get all the, all the drills into one container. But I was really surprised that I could get it into a smaller container. I thought it was going to take the, my biggest one, the largest one that I had. And it's coming up right. Oops, wait. Have a straggler. Get it. So it's coming up right now. That's the biggest container that I have. One, two, three, four, five. And these are very full. They're not the slightly full ones. They are very full baggies. And I stop at one point and just guarantee that they're all the same number that I haven't goofed up before I get them all mixed up. But this is where having, you know, different size containers for me, it might not make sense for everybody, but for me, just means I can get it all kitted up. Everything's organized. I don't have to worry about stopping what I'm doing and refilling a container from a baggie. And I, my last four or five paintings, I haven't had very many spares. So I don't have to worry about having a complete bag of spares to, to worry about putting away. So I have confidence that I can pour all of these into one container and not end up with a full bag of drills afterwards as, as spares. It's not going to be that many. I might have a couple hundred, but not enough to, to warrant leaving them all baggied up. About here is when I go, oh, I have room. Yep, this means, oh, look, it, I have room. We can go smaller.
so the large one goes back into my storage bin and see it's still bigger than the other ones that I've been using so and in just a moment we're going to be able to look at the canvas gorgeous canvas gorgeous gorgeous canvas I know you have a choice of channels and I really really appreciate that you choose to spend just a little bit of your time with me until next time thank you so much bye guys